Perspective of Vincent Fensterer. Message to Headless Herald of Hexadecimal Hackery. So, what are we going to do about that webcomic idea? I would need you to write it, obviously. Otherwise, I don't know what to draw. Also, how do you intend to pay me? I just wanted to check if you're still interested. What do you mean? We'll get the money from selling merch and- Don't even try claiming that it will finance itself. I know comic artists. It's never profitable. I delete the message. Don't worry, I've still got a bit of cash and I can write some articles for QuickBook. Fair enough, but you'll have to pay for each page in advance. And write comprehensible, comprehensive scene descriptions. From the explanation, it really wasn't clear what you're going for. Okay, picture some insane post-urban clusterpunk bullshit with metasensical absurd abstractivist elements. I'll do it right there. That sounds sick and real aesthetic, but those descriptors don't mean anything. Post-urban isn't even a real word. Be concrete, and this is gonna be dope. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll send you some shit later. In a strange state of inspired panic, I open Word. Last editor turns out to not be anything related to the comic, barely even three lines of text. My brain is broken, my mind is melting, my psyche splattered across an uncountable number of unfinished documents, but it's thankless thinking with this corpse of a cortex, this cracked cranium full of incoherent ideas. Sort of ironic for that to be the last message of an obviously directionless, unpolished and unfinished piece of writing from a me that was either very tired or very drunk. Doesn't matter. Delete. Hey, brother. Care for a good time? Called the coarse voice of a man whose lungs had clearly come into contact with more THC than oxygen from a dark alleyway trying to sell either bitches or drugs. I didn't look to check which, seeing how I couldn't afford either. Dark alleyway, in these parts at least, is only a contextually meaningful descriptor, since someone from pretty much anywhere else would consider the streets I was running through at this very moment a particularly dark specimen. It had, however, not the slightest chance to compare with the sheer amount of unfiltered luminal deficiency and delinquency that radiated from the offshoot the dealer-slash-pimp called his own. What? No, 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 no. This is a comic and not a fucking novel. Also, wasn't the protagonist supposed to be a hood rat himself? Why would he think slash talk like this then? Fuck this. Tabula rather the shit out of that and start from scratch. Jesus. Y'all. Wait. Can I say th it would be kind of immersion breaking if I didn't, or rather the characters didn't, not me who's talking after all. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure that's not something those who would get upset over it are likely to care about. I could just claim that I am black, which is well, arguably even more racist, but they leave me no choice. Sacrifices have to be made to preserve the believability of a story. Words flow onto digital paper the way it has always been, opening a document and re-emerging from the trance once a substantial amount of words has come to fill it. The text rarely even correlates to the thing that had been thought up if there even was earlier consideration of what the white space might hold. It's fascinating. Getting up is hard, speaking is hard, remembering is hard, but thinking? Thinking is passive, not thinking is impossible, and writing is just thinking while sitting at a keyboard. Paragraphs about a young man trading the keys to a run-down apartment to some thugs in exchange for them pretending to pursue him through the neighborhood replace nothingness. The chase, accompanied by gunshots, leads down the complex of stairwell, through busy streets, a woman's kitchen window, and some dimly lit alleyways, one of which contains a bar called Exile, only the letters ESL of the neon sign are illuminated in a slightly on-the-nose reference to the cult class of Regulus, the king's rubble. The so far, and henceforth, unnamed main character, a morally light grey scam artist, upon bursting through the door, meets his contact. The journalist pulls on his cap twice as a signal, though this isn't remotely necessary, as his nervous demeanour and pretend poor style of clothing make him stick out like a sore thumb. He is dressed the way I would if I were to attempt to fit in in the huts, something I would imagine to be entirely unconvincing. As the outsider scrolls through a newsfeed reporting on the commotion outside, he is approached by the main character, whereupon they engage in some banter about who blew their cover more. 
The scam artist's chase outside was of course a farce to present the image of someone worth chasing. He trades a USB drive of unknown content against a decent amount of cash before ordering two whiskies. The joke being that the bar owner is a Cuban refugee who does not speak English, every order therefore resulting in a mystery drink, something the reporter did not expect. The main character's scheme of unknown purpose proves successful as the two men part ways amicably. That's a good start. Keeping things unexplained, building mystery. Good shit. I should ask Gerald if the exile, spelled E-X-I-S-L-E, thing is too on the nose, though. Explicitly mentioning that the owner is Cuban so quickly after establishing the establishment is kinda cheap, as opposed to simply having him talk with an accent or acknowledging his origin later in the comic, when the audience has gotten used to the bar's name. Whatever. That stuff can be ironed out later. For now, this is a pretty solid hook. A bit of marmashilla... Ah, shit, it's empty. A swig of actual whiskey to celebrate then. Just as I lift the bottle to my lips and tilt my head backwards in a strangely cartoonish manner, which was once described as clearly indicating that I value the aesthetic of excessive drinking almost as much as the act itself, Lloyd enters the room, contorting his face in a combination of pity and disgust. You made it to the kitchen, I see. Prepare to be more impressed as I tell you that I sleepwalked there from Lowe's room. Apart from the fact that I somehow find that less impressive than you moving your waking ass self to the ground floor, why the fuck were you in Lowe's room? Was he actually here for a change? Nah, I just ate his stuff, also talked to him for a bit, but like, in messages. Wrote some scenes for a webcomic, pretty productive day overall if you ask me. If that was all the same day, I'm not sure. <laughs> Man, I haven't seen the guy in months now. I see how this house isn't particularly welcoming to socially competent people, but still, does he have a new girlfriend? Haven't heard anything since Space Girl broke up with him. Catherine? Yes, who else could I possibly mean by that? I don't know, I just find it weird that she got a cool sounding nickname. Just going with what fits, there's no personal feelings involved, Freeloader. Good to know. So hi to Lowe, if you talk to him again, he never responds to me. Will do, after I empty this bottle, that is. You can't be serious. I wasn't, but after that challenge, watch me. A two-thirds full bottle of hard liquor doesn't go down quite as easily as a few cans of Mumshalob, but it has the interesting effect of numbing my throat after the first few glugs, making the sensation of the liquid flowing down to my stomach almost surreal. Lloyd either hasn't dropped the disgusted expression over the duration of our talk, or he has chosen to reuse it now. I'm going to bed. Try not to throw up on the floor again. I enjoy a few more minutes of almost sobriety before my vision cuts out.